What up, everybody? At the end of Raising Canaan, Season 3, Episode 6, FBI agent Tanner called Howard into his office and handed him a picture, asking him if he knew this, with Howard replying, he's a local guy, did some time for distribution, always into something. Come to find out that the picture that Tanner handed Howard was of Marvin. Somehow the feds were able to connect Marvin to Marco Baselli, saying Marvin was implicated by a witness in a cocaine operation a while back. The witness was later murdered, and the hitter in that job was one Marco Baselli. So now the big question is, did the feds put this information together themselves, or do they have a snitch giving them info? Because coincidentally, they didn't have this information until a snitch could have come from a couple different angles within this episode. So the feds most likely at least have one snitch, and possibly they got a snitch coming from more than one angle. But like Rock said, she's aware and ready for what's coming at her from any angle. So after Howard relays this info back to Rock, Marvin might have to go cancel Christmas on anyone who can connect him to Lane's nightclub and Tony Deep. Obviously, the first person to look at would be the man who walked up to Marvin at the playground while telling Marvin how he was always walking in on him and Tony D. Marvin played it off like he wasn't the man who that man was talking about. But the man was clearly offended and went to get his child and left. This man from Lanes could have possibly turned to the feds after seeing Marvin at the club. And because of Marvin's reaction, it caused him to be suspicious that Marvin had something to do with Tony's murder. But obviously, my first thought of who the snitch could be was Gerald. And I still think that he might be playing both sides and giving the feds info. But at the same time, would Gerald really bring Marvin around his kids if he knew who Marvin was and planned on snitching on him? I think that is definitely more personal than a snitch would want to get. But at the same time, Gerald is planning on writing an article for the newspaper about Jukebox and said he would have to interview both Jukebox and Marvin for the article. So even if Gerald isn't the snitch, this newspaper article could come into play at some point down the line if Marvin does later go back to prison. And this could be possibly why Juke later changes her last name to Ganner. But like I just mentioned, Marvin, Rock, and Howard will have to look at every angle and who could possibly be the rat. So this could definitely cause Marvin to think that Gerald is a rat, only to kill him by mistake, like we saw happen with Scrappy or Ghost killing Rolla in Power Season 1. But if the snitch isn't Gerald or the guy from Lanes, it could definitely be coming from the side of the Italian Mafia, and the snitch being either Giorgio, Stefano's bodyguard, or possibly even Stefano himself. Because honestly, it looks like Stefano has already dry snitched when Marvin first walked into the fish store by asking Marvin if he was the mailman. And Marvin confirmed that he was the mailman by saying that he always delivers. How is this dry snitching? Because the fact that Stefano's fish shop is now bugged, and this is why he's always stepping out back to talk business. But notice he didn't mind calling Marvin the mailman inside the shop. My question is... Was this intentional? Because I'm sure that by now, someone who has witnessed Sal's shooting has told the cops there was a man dressed up like a mailman who shot Sal. And we don't know if Sal's men ID'd Marvin and could still be coming for retaliation later on this season also. But the move that's going to make all the difference is how we're getting on that task force. Because even before finding out the feds were looking into Marvin, he spoke to his boss about getting on the task force. This was after Tanner was asking Howard if he knew anything about Unique and if Howard knew about Unique being connected to Crown Camacho. Only for Howard to find out that Tanner wasn't buying the story about Crown being the person in charge of the coke operation. So when Howard gets on the task force, it will be a game changer because the fact that if the feds have a witness or a snitch, Howard will now be able to find out who that is. But I also asked the question, is Tanner giving Howard rope to hang himself with? All Tanner would have to do would be to find a way to connect Howard with Rock. 
and he would know that Howard's hands were dirty. Keep in mind that Sax and John Mock brought down Angela's same type of way by giving her rope to hang herself with. They told Angela that Tony Teresi was the C.I., only for Teresi to turn up dead soon after that. Will Howard get caught up the same type of way? Howard mentioned to the captain, building up his pension and riding off into the sunset. But I doubt that it will be that easy for Howard. I think his dirt will come back around before it's all said and done. Now getting back to Marvin, keep in mind what OG Kanan said about Marvin in Season 1, Episode 1. He never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity, but he's loyal. And we definitely saw that first part play out in Episode 6 as Marvin overstepped his boundaries with Juke's girl group. But I want to focus on that loyal part of the statement for a minute though. Because I do think if things start to get too hot and the feds start coming down on Rock and pinning everything on her, I think we could even see Marvin take responsibility for everything to save Rock and Lulu. Because the big problem with the feds connecting Marvin to the Italians is this automatically ties in Rock and Lou as well. Simply because the fact they're Marvin's siblings and both were involved in the shootings. Lou had Bulletproof Records Studios shot up and Rock had her own house shot up. Both having to catch a couple bodies in self-defense at the same time also. Now here is where things could take an interesting turn. Keep in mind that in just last episode, Tanner brought in Rock for questioning. And Rock brought her lawyer in with her. After questioning, Tanner spoke to the lawyer privately and the lawyer came out and said that Rock won't have to worry about those feds anymore. But also keep in mind, this was the same lawyer who represented Marvin in the case with Tony Deep and the case eventually got dropped. And Marvin was sent to anger management for the weed that he had in his pocket at the time he was arrested. So just another angle that we might not be suspecting is that the lawyer gave Tanner that information. Or Tanner was able to connect Marvin to Tony Deep by looking into Rock's lawyer and finding out that he had also represented Marvin in the past. So the big question is, will Marvin go back to prison? Because right now the odds are stacked against him. Go ahead and leave your prediction in the comment section. Do you think Marvin will go back to prison or will they find a way to beat this case? And before I go, I need to mention the fact that if Marvin goes back to prison, this could also play a factor in Jukebox becoming more cold-blooded. Because we see from episode 6 how much she cared about Marvin when she was ready to fight Crystal about him. Even after he had already made himself look like a fool and Jukebox had to put him out. But she still had his back 100 that shows Juke has real love for her father. And there you have it. Who snitched on Marvin and will he go back to prison? Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.